Kirby's Block Ball, released for the Game Boy in 1995, is yet another game where Kirby has to roll around like a ball to play a classic game of some sort. While the first time was pinball, and the second time was golf, this time, the powerful Puff has to try their hand at Breakout. This game is currently not generally available, but hopefully Nintendo will add it to Switch Online sometime soon. My next playing Kirby video is going to be on Kirby's Toy Box, which is a Satellaview game that, just based on being a Satellaview game, I'm sure most of you haven't even heard of. And even those of you who've heard of it, probably haven't played it. So if that interests you, or you want to see other Nintendo lore and theories, then please subscribe to the channel. This game takes place in Blockland, a series of islands floating above Dreamland. There is a surprising number of these, including both the Float Islands and Mirror World. I'm sure there are more, these are just the first ones that came to mind. King Dedede fled here after once again stealing the five sparkling stars, and Kirby, needing once again to save the day, followed him up. Blockland is split into 12 different islands. Ten of these are the outside islands, where the main stages of the game take place. These are manned by Dedede's strongest allies. Most of these are returning enemies or bosses from previous games, with the exception of one, the stage 10 boss, Brobo who, presumably, is just one of the many robots that Deity has built. Though this one, refreshingly enough, does not look like him. Upon defeating Robo, two different things can happen depending on whether or not Kirby got a high score in each of the previous 10 islands. If they have not achieved 10 high scores, then they just... leave. Ignore the castle on the middle island that clearly belongs to Deity, and go out to find some delicious strawberry cake, forgetting the entire mission. On the other hand, if Kirby has reached the point threshold for each island, or Borderline, as the game so confusingly calls it, they can complete one more level where they fight against King Dedede. Upon winning this battle, Kirby destroys the castle, flying away with the sparkling stars, and once again leaving Dedede in shame. Another quick and easy story, but where does it fit on the timeline? Well, there are a few factors we could bring up. First of all, Kabbala shows up. Seeing as how Spring Breeze overtook the original Dream Lane in Canonicity, this is our second time seeing the airship, after Revenge of the King, and will in actuality be the last time it plays any major role in the series until we get all the way to Planet Robobot, when she is no longer serving Dedede. So immediately her appearance gives us an era to focus around. This game also has a lot of similarities to Kirby's Pinball Land, both in Dedede's plan, making Kirby play a ball game, and in visuals, with both the sprites for Dedede and Poppy Bros Jr. being taken directly from that game. This is especially interesting because that wasn't the last Game Boy title in the series, with Dream Land 2 releasing in between them, which they totally could have taken Dedede from. The most interesting piece of evidence I've noticed is in the ruins of Dedede's castle. When Kirby destroys it, what's left behind is a pile of rubble and a fountain. That seems like a really strange inclusion, don't you think? I have to wonder if this is the Fountain of Dreams, which serves as the focal point of Nightmare in Dreamland. In that game, Dedede had stolen the Star Rod to keep Nightmare trapped in the fountain. In this game, Dedede seems to have covered a fountain for no apparent reason. Unless, that is, the castle was there to protect it, either by Dedede or whoever else had wound up in Blockland before him. And if that is the case, then naturally, it would only make sense for this game to take place directly before the events of Nightmare in Dreamland. Though, given the placement of Pinball Land and the inclusion of Mr. Shine and Mr. Bright as bosses, that's probably the placement I would have gone with no matter what. And thanks for watching! I really enjoy these little kind of mini Kirby games, and we're kind of getting to a close on them, which is going to be a little disappointing, because they're a lot of fun. I think these games eventually got turned into the sub-games that we'd see in later Kirby titles after Superstar, so they won't be completely gone, just much less relevant. For a while, at least. I'll see you next time.